Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up and this week we have some lovely games on sale. First though, congratulations to the winner of a copy of Kingdom Come Deliverance. Your name is on the screen right now. You left a fantastic comment and I liked it and there it is. Also we do have another giveaway, just make sure that you leave your comments down below. Alright, what are the best games on sale this week? Well, let's find out if your backlog's about to get any bigger. A big thank you to the sponsor of this episode that's Across the Obelisk, which is very much like Slay the Spire, but it also has a co-op online mode, which is absolutely fantastic and allows you and up to three other people to play together through its campaign. Now, the idea here is that the princess has gone missing. You form a band of, I believe, four different heroes from several different classes and then you head out. It has a world map and you choose different destinations with almost like a choose your own adventure style section between each combat. Sometimes you'll have to fight against multiple different enemies and each of your units has their own deck which gives it a really unique feeling. There is very strong meta progression so whether you win or lose you'll always be able to upgrade your cards, you'll be able to gain new currency to buy new cards and you can also get rid of old ones to try and refine your decks. Once you find yourself completely and utterly hooked on it, which I guarantee you will, you should check out our full sponsored video on this one, then there's a ton of DLC to buy as well. I just went on a complete rampage and bought it all. I just, yeah, couldn't stop myself. It's very good. And thank goodness the game features touchscreen controls. The base experience though, you're looking at £21.99 or your regional equivalent, or there is a pack that includes some of the DLC that's slightly more expensive. Once again, a big thanks to Paradox for sponsoring this episode. First up then, and to no one's surprise really, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is down 40%. Now I say to no one's surprise, I'm not surprised they produced it because they did exactly the same on every other game they've had on Switch very quickly as well. But I think the percentage of discount is actually a little bit surprising. That's a massive chunk off, particularly when it only just came out, what, two months ago? And it's a fantastic game. If you're unsure about this one, they took Prince of Persia in the Metroidvania direction and it suits it perfectly. It still has that really fast paced, slick combat. It has a nice art style. It runs 60 frames per second on Nintendo Switch. And yeah, we absolutely loved it in our full review. The game features a few different modes. There's kind of accessibility options, like you can have map markers to make it much easier to get around, or you can have everything completely blanked out so that you don't know where you're going and it's all about that exploration. The combat has a counter mechanic and it also has like a dodge move so you can avoid damage. But there's a very cool thing where if you can time your defensive move at just the right time, your parry, you'll perform like a, a fatality move of sorts. It's used on boss fights as well, but on the littler enemies, it will kill them in one go. Really good game, some nice twists and turns, great soundtrack. Overall, quite good voice acting as well. And yeah, for that price, an easy essential pickup. Following on from that then, we've got one that's in a completely different vein and it's Slime Rancher, which in the US regions is down 60%. Now this is as if you mixed a first person cartoon with a monster ranching game. So you've got to collect creatures, but it is from that first person perspective. And actually it's really quite addictive this. I only played this one maybe for the first time about nine months ago and it quickly became one of my go-to games. And then my daughter saw it and was like, this is like everything that she likes in a game. Like it's kind of unusual, a little bit strange, but also very easy to pick up and play. And then it gets its hooks in and it's like, you can spend tens of hours just building up your different creatures and your area as well. And it's a nice twist to have that perspective for this genre, in my opinion. As I say, that's 60% off in the US regions. Then you've got Doom Eternal at 75% off, which is, I think, the cheapest it's ever been. And it is nice to see some of the Doom games. This isn't the only one. You can pick up the first Doom 2016 if you so choose. But for me, Doom Eternal is definitely the better of the two games. It does have more verticality in it. It's a, it's a bigger game in terms of the amount of content you're getting. And there's actually an extra game mode that is uh, separate from the campaign that's a whole lot of fun, very difficult, and sees you fighting off like hordes of monsters. In fact, it's brutal and I was getting annihilated and I didn't really understand it at first. And then I got to grips with it. 
Now it carries over a lot of the things you loved from the first one. So there's that melee system that rewards you with ammunition and health pickups to keep the flow of the game going. And it's just really enjoyable. So that's Doom Eternal, 75% off, I believe in all regions. Which gives me a chance to talk about my other favorite one from this developer and it's Wolfenstein 2, which is 85% off. Now Wolfenstein, the first one, isn't on the Nintendo Switch, which is really quite strange. But the sequel featuring the same BJ Blazkowicz is on Switch and it's very cool. Now for me personally, as you know, you know what I'm going to say. It does upset me when any first person shooter on Switch doesn't have gyro controls because for my personal preferences, it just adds so much. But regardless, it still handles well on Switch. If you've got like a pro controller or at least a semi-decent set of Joy-Cons, not the stock ones, then it's it's quite playable. In handheld, it's also, it looks nice, you know, it looks nice and crisp. It's a good game. I think the storyline is a lot more interesting than the first one. It might be a lot more in depth and a little darker than you're expecting, but at 85% off, an easy pickup. I think for most people, on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I don't even hate Pokemon like a lot of people do. Like the, the latest release, although it looks bad, let's be honest, it looks bad. I actually think the core gameplay is decent. I think I preferred Arceus because it actually launched in a semi-decent state. Although even that was, you know, it had its issues and they had to patch it up, but they actually did that, unlike um, some things. But, it, you know, there are some other really good monster collecting games on Switch, and one of them is Coromon. It's 50% off at the moment. It obviously takes its inspirations from the earlier Pokemon games, and I have to be honest, I kind of want po the Pokemon company to go back in this direction. I think it just fits nicely to the, the flavor that Pokemon had for me when I was a kid. Now, I don't... You know, I don't mind them going 3D if they're going to move away from the engine they're currently on and get things actually performing right so you can enjoy the experience without having to just worry about everything going weird and falling through the ground and stuff. But yeah, Coromon's lovely. While doing nothing particularly new, it manages to tell a reasonable story while being a very good Pokemon clone. So yeah, 50% off, certainly one to consider. Figment 2 is another one that we very much enjoyed here at Switch Up. I say we, it's just Glenn and I, isn't it? it always, I always find it weird when channels say we, and you're like, hang on, it's just you. <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing? No one's fooled. But anyway, um, what was I talking about? Figment 2. It's a good adventure game. It does also have co-op mode where one of you can play as like the bird, which is all right. Like, personally, I always prefer it when you have like an equal ability character, you know? Not one of you is like the flea, and then the other one is the big barbarian, as is so often the case. But Figment 2 took things in a slightly different way. So basically, the whole game basically plays out in someone's mind, and uh, it's got a musical element to it, and there's rhythm-based boss fights, which were very cool. Now, I would say its base price was just too expensive, and that might be a bit harsh, but it launched with some mediocre performance. It was just too expensive. So at this price, like, it's, such an easy pickup and an easy recommendation if you're looking for a solo adventure or a co-op one. It is lovely and it has also received many patches, so happy days. That's uh, potentially one to add to your backlog. Now I have to mention Observer at 85% off in some regions just because I miss Rutger Hauer. He was such an absolute legend and I've got a bit of a problem. Like I, I watch Blade Runner probably about twice a month. <laughs> that is an issue, isn't it? That's, that's just not right. I just love it. I absolutely love it. I read the book again the other week. And well, I say read the book. I'm one of these modern saddos that uses like audio books. But I have the attention span of a gnat. So um, yeah, it just works out nicely for me. But Observer kind of reminded me of why Rutger Hauer was the perfect character, um, you know, in Blade Runner. And here he plays as a detective who's on the search for someone's missing son. And they managed to base the whole thing within like a tower block in, in the near future. And it's very interesting how you interact with a lot of the NPCs through their doors. They kind of keep the door shut and a little face comes up on the screen. And you have like a scanning ability, one that's for electrical, one biological. And you can also hack into the minds of deceased victims 
and then experience their last moments. It's, uh, yeah, really unique. And as a huge sci-fi fan, it worked for me. It comes from Bloober Team, who did the Layers of Fear game on Switch. So it gives you an idea of the pedigree. The only thing, and as we saw with Layers of Fear 2, where they just went down that being chased by an antagonist route, there is a section in in Observer where that happens. And I was like, why is this even in here? Um, thankfully, it wasn't that long. But also, I think the game ends a bit abruptly. Anyway, regardless of all of that, there's a lot of that hidden lore in the world and it's just a nice experience, even on Switch, but for me playing in a handheld, that's 85% off. Now the hidden gem this week goes to the Forest Quartet, which is 70% off at the moment. And I had no clue about this till I watched a little eShop video, like a trailer on this about the time it launched because we were looking at Glenn's best of, you know, the best upcoming games of the week. And this really caught my eye. It has a very melancholy um, storyline where you're basically playing as a ghost creature, uh, moving around, solving puzzles, but it has a fantastic soundtrack as well. And actually, although some of the elements don't come together perfectly, for me, it classes exactly as a hidden gem. I think if this was to be reviewed, for, for me, it would be something like 80%, maybe late 70s. But it's so unique and it really does excel in what it's trying to do. And at 70% off, which I think is the cheapest it's ever been, then yeah, uh, an easy hidden gem selection of the week. Which takes me on to that wonderful time where I talk about Fetkooks. And the South Africans are like, yes, you pronounced it quite well. <laughs> and then I talk about Savaloys and there's people in the comments saying, right, there were no good games in this list, but I left with a pocket full of sausages. <laughs> and that's what these are. They're very, very cheap games. You can just grab, you know, it's, it's that, it's that, you know, when you go into checkout in a shop and you're like, you've got one item and then you get there and they, they put all the, like the little one pound sweets and stuff and like the little bags of coffee that you don't need and like spoons that for some reason are fancy and you have to buy. They put all that down there. That's what this section is. First up, we've got Ukulele, a fantastic platformer, but at 90% off, about a quid for one of the best old school platformers we've got on Switch with those new school stylings. That's an easy pickup. Then you've got Doom 64. You can go the 64 route of Doom, nice and uh, straightforward, but it has that co-op play in there which is so fun in split screen. That's 60% off. I mean, it was stupidly cheap to begin with, but now you can get it for equally cheap. I have to throw in the fact that Quake is actually just as cheap at the moment and has, yeah, similarly excellent gameplay. Disjunction, which I believe Dave Morris did a review for us on way back when, is 88% off. Now I would say go check out his full review because I haven't got a Scooby-Doo about it but he did like it and I trust his opinion. It's really good and looks interesting. Finally, you've got God Strike, which is another review we had on the channel. It's 87% off. I don't know if this was as in, I can't quite remember, but it's almost like a mixture of a bullet hell arena brawler with some roguelite elements. And it's easy to pick up and play. Nice, easy loading game. Doesn't set the world on fire in my opinion, doesn't set any benchmarks or anything, but for a couple of quid, like, that's an insane price. It launched, I think, at something like, it was like 10 to 15 quid, something like that. So for 199, yeah, an excellent Savaloy and a nice little loading game. And that is it for this week. Hopefully that has some nice little choices for you, some nice pickups and uh, something to bolster that very small backlog that you're struggling to maintain. So yeah, hopefully you've also found something uh, that you can recommend to someone else. Let us know in the comments any of your recommendations because I always find them useful. In fact, thank you to the person that recommended that I get Prince of Persia The Last Crown into the video because I hadn't actually seen that it was on sale because the eShop is absolute trash. If you struggle with the eShop as much as we do, use Deku Deals. We're not affiliated with them, but everyone that does sales videos uses them. Uh, yeah, so you should definitely be shouting them out. And uh, yeah, nice one. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I hope you've had a good one and that you have a nice week next week. If you'd like to save any money on any of your things, your Joy-Cons, your physical games, your digital games, there are links to most things down in the description. A thank you to our Patreons, our members, and as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep your Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!